Hello, algebra students. Welcome to this lecture on graphing systems of linear inequalities. Uh, this should be a very familiar phrase because we just studied something very similar. We just studied graphing systems of linear equations. So uh, we, in that section, we would be given two equations. Uh, those multiple equations are called systems. So it'd be something like this, 2x plus 3y equals 18. And then maybe something like y equals 4x minus 3. I don't know, something like this. We would call this a system of linear equations. And we spent a long time uh, solving these things. We actually learned three different ways to solve these equations. We talked about gra solving that system using uh, graphing, where you would graph the two lines and look for their intersection point. And we also called, talked about substitution and elimination. Now, the difference between those sections and this section, section 3.3, .3, is that they're not going to be equations anymore with equal signs in them. They're going to be inequalities, something like, you know, 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 18. And maybe uh, this one here would say, you know, y is greater than 4x minus 3. So your guys' tasks are going to be to graph each of these inequalities, and then, yeah, shade the appropriate region. That's the entirety of this section. So remember, the difference between graphing an inequality like these and graphing an e equation, right, if they had an equal sign here, uh, there's two differences to graphing those, okay? You pretend, essentially pretend like it's an equation, except for two things. One, you have to decide if your line is solid or dotted. And number two, the second difference is that you have to shade the appropriate region. What you're trying to do is you're trying to shade all of the points that satisfy both of the two different inequalities. So steps, pretty straightforward. Graph this guy. Pretend it's an equal sign. Graph it. Decide if it's a solid or dotted line. Of course, this one would be a solid line. It's solid because it's got the or equal to part. So if it was a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to, it would be a solid line. And this one here would be a dotted, right? Because if it's a greater than or a less than, then it would be a dotted line. Then you would graph this one. Um, and then at the end, you're going to shade the region that makes both inequalities true. Essentially, you're going to have a line and another line, right? Uh, and one of these four regions should make both inequalities true. And you have to find that region, and that can be sometimes challenging. We'll go over some, some uh, tips on how to do that effectively. So here's the steps, like we just said, graph each inequality and shade the region that makes both or all of the inequalities true. All right, our first example. Uh, we have y is less than or equal to 3x minus 2, and x plus y is greater than negative 4. So this is a system of linear inequalities because it's more than one inequality. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph each one individually. Remember, to graph it, you pretend it's an equal sign. So then you would have y equals 3x minus 2. Uh, this is in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to go down to negative 2 and put a dot. And then its slope is 3. Remember, slope is y is over run. So from that dot, I'm going to go up, up 3 and over 1. This is a less than or equal to, so it's going to be a solid line, not a dotted line. And in order to connect them, get that line right there. Up next, I'm going to graph this one. Uh, there's a couple different ways that you could graph this, one of which would be to solve for y, so you'd subtract x and then graph it using the same idea of slope-intercept form. Uh, when my equations are in standard form like this, I like to make the little t-table with zeros in the corners. Uh, it should be pretty easy to find these other points. If you plug in zero for x, this just goes away, and you have y. Remember, we're pretending it's equal sign there, so y is equal to negative 4. And if you plug in 0 for y, this one goes away, and that would also be negative 4. So 0, negative 4 is here, and negative 4, 0 is here. This one is going to be a dotted line because it doesn't have the or equal to part. And you're just going to connect those. So 
we have now four different regions. We have one region here, one region here, one region here, and one region here. One of these four regions is going to satisfy both of my inequalities, and I have to decide uh, which inequality would do that. Uh, there's two different rules of thought here, and I don't particularly care which one that you're using as long as you're doing this correctly. I'm going to go through both. Uh, one of them is to find a test point from each region and test it. It has to work for both. So I'm just going to pick randomly. I'm going to pick the point zero, 00. I don't know if this actually works or not, but I'm going to try it. If you plug in zero, 00, does it work in both inequalities? So if I plug in zero, 00 here, I would have 0 is less than negative 2, right? If I plugged in 0 for x and 0 for y, but if 0 is less than negative 2, 0 is not less than negative 2. 0 is greater than negative 2. So this is not the correct reason to see. I'm just going to go through every region just like that and find the one that works, right? Because one of them will work for both of the two inequalities. 0, 0 would have worked for this one, right? 0 is greater than negative 4. So it works for this one in red. So I know it's going to be one of these two regions then. But I can just keep going down the list um, and test a different point, right? Uh, I tested one point from this region. I'm going to test a point from this region. I'm going to test 5, 0. If I plug in 5 for x and 0 for y, I would have 0 is less than or equal to. Plugging in 5 here would give me 15 minus 2 is 13. Is 0 less than or equal to 13? It absolutely is. So it works for the top line. It has to work for both, though. So I'm going to test test 5, 0 in this one. If I plug in 5 for x and 0 for y, that is 5, and 5 is greater than negative 4. Therefore, the, the point 5, 0 works for both, and I'm going to shade that entire region, and I'm done. I said I was going to tell you guys two different methods to decide which region to shade. I'm still going to do that. Um, pretend I didn't know that 5, 0 worked. Okay. We don't know that yet. So what you would do then, if you don't want to use the test point method, is you would look at each inequality individually. So y is less than or equal to 3x minus 2. This is my blue line here. And one of the things I told you guys in uh, the video on section 3.1 and how to decide which region to shade, if y is alone and on the left, you can just look at the inequality. If it's a less than sign, you shade under it. And if it's a greater than sign, you shade above it. Now, that only works if it's y is alone and on the left, which it is in the first inequality. So because it's y is less than, it's going to be underneath that line. If I picked a point and looked underneath it, that would be this direction. And I put little arrows on my line. So I know it's going to be this direction of the blue line. And I'm going to go look at the red one, right? Then I'm going to do kind of the same idea. Uh, this one... Y is not alone and on the left, so we kind of have to use a test point. I'm just going to look at the red line here. I'm going to pick a test point. I'm going to pick the point 0, 0. See if that works. Does 0, 0 work? Is 0 uh, plus 0 greater than negative 4? It is. So I would shade that direction, or in this case, I'm just going to draw an arrow towards that direction. Because the one that works for this red line is that direction. And then once I've done that for both, I'm going to look to see which... Uh, which region has both of the lines have the arrows pointing towards, and that would be this direction here. So I know to shade that one. I'm going to do one more example, and then that's going to be it. Uh, here we have x is greater than negative 2. Remember, we're pretending I'm graphing the line x is equal to negative 2. And I talked about how to graph these, what I told you guys, if it says x equals a number or y equals a number, is to make a t-chart. Uh, the only thing that we know is that x is equal to negative 2. So the x is always negative 2, and you can pick anything you want to for the y's. So I could pick 5, I could pick negative 1, I could pick 2. Negative 2, 5 is up here. Negative 2, negative 1. Negative 2, 2. Uh, as, I can, as you can see, this is going to be a vertical line. So you have to decide if this is a dotted line or a solid line, and hopefully you guys land on this being a dotted line. And then right now, traditionally when I'm graphing these uh, systems of linear inequalities, I use the arrow method and I do it right after I graph it. 
So x is greater than negative 2. Which direction are the x values bigger than negative 2? Hopefully you guys agree that this is the direction. I could use a test point like 0, 0. Does 0 work here? It will. Um, but I know it's going to be that direction of that line. Now I'm going to go ahead and graph this inequality. And we talked about how to graph absolute value equations. Remember, we're pretending this is an equal sign. So we're pretending like we're graphing this. We talked about this in 2.7. So this x plus 2, that is a horizontal shift. If you recall, the ones inside the absolute values are your horizontal shifts. And horizontal shifts happen the opposite way that you think they will. So if it says plus 2, I would think it would shift to the right 2, but it actually shifts to the left 2. And there is no vertical shift here. The vertical shift would happen after the absolute value signs. So this is just going to be shifted over 2, and it's going to start right there. Now, this is a negative, this is a reflection indicated by that negative sign. So I know it's gonna be opening downward and there's no number here, so the number is gonna be one. So from this step, from this, uh, this is the vertex, we're gonna go down one over one, down one over one, down one over one, down one, left one, left one, left one, right? This is gonna be a solid line as indicated by the or equal to. And now I have to shade one part. Remember uh, what I said about when y is alone and on the left, like it is here. If it's a less than, it's going to be under. And if it's a greater than, it's going to be over. This is happens to be a less than, so it's going to be underneath this line. That would go this direction, right? And then I'm going to look for the region with both arrows. And that would be this region here. And then I'm done. So that is uh, a brief introduction to graphing systems of linear inequalities. Uh, please let me know if you guys have any questions.